And we're live from Messari's Mainnet 2021 from New York City with Nitya from C Labs. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Well, likewise, super happy to have you here. And Cedo is a project that we, we, we kept on hearing about and more and more, especially with the recent program that you've been launched. But I want to give some context to the people who are not familiar with Cello. So can you define us in a few sentences? What is Cello? Yeah, of course. I always like to start with the mission of Cello, which is um, to create a financial system that enables the conditions for prosperity for everyone. Um, and really, that informs a lot of how Cello's thought about building um, a blockchain. So Cello is mobile first in its approach. Um, we have a lightweight identity protocol, a proof of stake blockchain, um, really aimed at kind of creating um, financial so solutions and financial services that everyone can access. And so um, we're a, a layer one project um, and then with a rich ecosystem of different kind of financial and other applications built on it. Super cool. Um, lately, you've been um, releasing your optics uh, bridge system, I'm going to call it like that. Uh, so it has been making waves, but you know, lately it's kind of like the, the weapon race for who has the best inter interoperability solution, the best bridges. We see centralized exchanges making bridges, decentralized organization proposing bridges, mm -hmm. uh, cross-chain layers like raising a lot of funds to, to, to make like uh, cutting edge solutions, to transfer assets from different uh, blockchains. What's the um, standing out point of uh, Optics, which is already live on Ethereum? Polygon, Iricon, and Cell, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Optics is amazing. Um, and I guess the, the reason that I, I get most excited about it is because, um, of course, uh, Optics and a lot of these cross-chain solutions are, are leading us to a world of more interoperability between networks. Um, I think the approach that Optics took of um, not having chains be one-to-one, -one, but rather have um, a protocol that you can plug into and then have bridges to every Optics um, supported chain is something that allows a lot of um, focus for a team. If they're deciding to build a bridge, they can bridge just to just build one bridge to Optics and then be connected everywhere. All right, interesting, interesting. Another point, which is a totally different topic, we hear more and more about these central uh, bank uh, digital currencies. It seems that they're unavoidable now. Uh, recently, you guys have been selected by the Singapore Monetary Authority uh, out of 300 participants to, like you're in the top 15, to eventually um, yeah, be involved in the design of Singapore's uh, digital currency. You correct me if I'm wrong. You know, uh, ideologically and philosophically, uh, in the crypto space, we tend to be sometimes against the concept of a CBDC because most of the times, this systems are permissioned. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you plan to blend, get the best out of both words and get involved on a CBDC program? What, what's your take on that and everything around this? Yeah, absolutely. So I think a lot of what makes um, Celo, I guess, an exciting platform for CBDC work is some, what, some of what I was mentioning, this mobile first approach, having um, an already built mobile application that's easy to deploy um, and uh, really easy to create this sort of minimal ecosystem. Um, that a, a CBDC would need to be implemented. And so I think Celo has from the start taken this kind of real world approach in building um, and has as a result made um, kind of informed a lot of technical decisions from that research, um, which has, uh, I think, led to in the CBDC realm, um, a lot of those things also being applicable to a CBDC. Okay, cool, cool. Speaking of CBDCs, something a bit similar, but not really stable coins. They can be algorithmic, they can be you know, like with a real peg, a real backing in a proper bank. Uh, you guys have their, your own stable coins on Celo, CUSD, CEURO. And I wanted to know what's your strategy, what are the standing out points of your stable coins? And usually a question that I ask to stable coin issuers, how do you guarantee, uh, how do you ensure the, the value of that stable coin? How do you make it uh, stable, keep it stable? Yeah. It's a challenge. Yeah, absolutely great question. So almost I'll start in reverse with how it works and then why, um, sure. why stable coins are great. So um, how it works, um, Celo is a combination, a hybrid approach of a collateralized, crypto collateralized um, asset as well as an algorithmic stable coin. So there's a, an on-chain exchange that manages the, the liquidity and keeps the peg that way. And then there is also a, um, an on-chain diversified reserve of crypto assets that also back the, the collateral. All right. 
very interesting. Uh, oh. oh, and then sorry, I forgot your second How do you keep it stable? Question. I mean, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, um, you wanted to say something else. Oh, I forgot <laughs> to answer your first question. Yeah, your first um, question. Yeah, yeah. Your second stable <laughs> yeah, which is like why stable coins um, matter. I think seller from the start was um, believe in an ecology of different currencies. So um, even, right, of course, like uh, fiat, um, so like cello euro, cello dollar, um, but even more broadly, like money as ecology. Um, and thinking about money as what people value and how people um, kind of pay for their goods and services or like what how people um, actually can spend value. And so um, kind of fiat, fiat back stable coins, or sorry, fiat um, tracking stable coins are like one example, um, but could even think more broadly of like baskets of um, goods and services or things like that. But broadly, Cello believes in like an eco ecology of money approach to this. All right, All right, fair. And lately, you've launched the DeFi for the People initiative. Can you tell us more about that and what is yeah what is going to change on Celo on the coming month for its users? What can we expect to see because of that? Yeah, yeah. So um, DeFi for the People, I believe, was announced um, in the last week or so, and um, is a sort of an incentive program and a series of different collaborative partnerships um, with different um, DeFi protocols. So um, some that have already launched, pulled together leave um, like sushi swap and then there are some programs that have already been on Celo for a long time Mula market um, ube swap um, some of the more uh, kind of Celo original projects um, so I think what we can expect from this is one just seeing a lot more activity around DeFi in Celo so um, one thing that's great about the way Celo is built is um, great gas fees are low transaction times are fast someone who up till this point has maybe um, been held back from trying out DeFi or just experimenting with different protocols now um, has a really great place to get started. I think that's something I'm really excited about. Very cool. You said gas fees, like gas costs are cheap. Um, I assume it's pretty scalable. Can, is it also inclusive to become like, uh, is it like, is there also a global inclusion notion for when you want to become a validator? What's the rule now for that? What if I want to take part to the network? Yeah. So um, at this exact point in time, right, you can, of course, participate through like the more DeFi mechanisms. Mm -hmm. um, the current validator set is, I believe, 110 mm -hmm. with work ongoing to increase that size as well. Um, additionally, um, operating a full node doesn't require any upfront capital costs. It's running the node and then you can, of course, um, kind of get started operating the network that way. And so that's a that's kind of the, the first uh, place I'd recommend um, operators to start is running a full node. Interesting. And you guys at C-Labs, are you looking for specific profiles right now? And also, do you have a message for any tech-savvy or non-tech-savvy users from France who want to get involved with Celo? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, right, Celo, um, if our mission, if what we're thinking about, uh, what I was talking about here with financial inclusion, really creating a, a, a more robust system for people to... Um, to, to sort of realize financial prosperity. Um, if that idea is appealing, we're hiring all, all across the board, right? The Cello Foundation, C Labs, all the different ecosystem projects, the Valora, Mula Market. Um, I would just go check out cello.org. Um, and there's like lots of different um, companies in the ecosystem that are hiring. Um, beyond that, I would say if you're a developer and you're excited about building DeFi, if you're currently building a DeFi project um, and you're interested in porting it over to Celo, um, Celo is fully EVM compatible, so that's very easy to do. Um, I would check out um, the developers page on the website for more information on that. Um, similarly, if you're a developer, we have a grants program. Even if you're an educator and you're interested in creating content, um, for Cello, we're even translating content. Um, we have grants available for that as well. And so, um, yeah, we'd definitely um, check that out. But right now, a lot of our um, biggest needs are definitely um, developers, builders who are really excited about creating new projects or joining existing projects. Um, and then, yeah, education. If you think your company could benefit from Cello's technology, um, same thing. Just get in touch. Great. And as usual, you'll find the final version of that video, which will be on YouTube all the documentation, relevant links associated with the video, like as usual, it's in the description. Nitya, thank you so much for your time and maybe we'll do a checkpoint like in six months to see what you guys have achieved and the new stuff, yeah. Absolutely, looking forward to it already. Great. Good to talk.